Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Here at Crypto Nation, just doing another, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, doing another update on uh, another episode of Crypto Nation Reacts. And this is the Allcoin Daily. The title is called Crypto Wins in Congress, Ethereum ETF, Trump versus Biden, big news. Uh, so, yeah, things are starting to heat up. We're getting closer and closer to the election. And I'm telling you, um, uh, things are, you know, starting to hit the fan, uh, you know, in the cryptocurrency market. And we're trying to, you know, find out which crypto president, well, which president who's going to be crypto friendly. Well, we already know Biden is not crypto friendly he, and he needs to step down anyways. But anyways, uh, just check out this episode, so, you know, see what they're talking about. The move would be a rate increase. We don't take things like that off the table, but that does not seem the, the, the likely direction. The likely direction does seem to be in as we make more progress in inflation and as the labor market remains strong, we begin to loosen policy at the right moment. And then excitement grew further as the chairman of the CFTC proudly proclaimed that per court rulings, Bitcoin and Ethereum are commodities. Just last week, a district court in the Northern District of Illinois entered summary judgment in favor of the CFTC in a case involving fraud by an unregistered entity that promised steady returns in digital asset commodities such as Bitcoin and Ether. In its decision, the court reaffirmed that both Bitcoin and Ether are commodities under the Commodity Exchange Act. CFTC Chairman Rostin Benham announced that an Illinois court has confirmed Bitcoin and Ethereum as digital commodities. He also went on to say that 70 to 80 percent of the cryptocurrency market are not securities, indicating a significant portion of the crypto market falls outside the securities regulatory framework. And yet crypto policy in the U.S. still needs to change. So, Crypto holders got even more excited when U.S. Congressman Patrick McHenry stood up giving a speech to support repealing Biden's veto, which prevents regulated financial firms from custodying Bitcoin and crypto. He says America will remain the best place in the world to deploy capital. I love this speech he gives here. Listen to what he says at the end. The substance here is about digital assets. And what we've shown in this chamber with a two-thirds vote 71 Democrats joining with just about every Republican, saying we want a market structure so we can develop the next generation of internet technology here in the United States, have consumer protection, safety and soundness ensured, that we can have the best capital markets on the globe and capital attracted from around the globe here in the United States so it can be deployed safely. And the cutting edge technologies and digital assets just as we have this debate on AI. We voted with a two-thirds vote to have a regulatory regime that looks like our capital markets for crypto. And my colleagues, after 21 voted to repeal this stupid accounting, I'm sorry, this ill-fitting, ill-designed, poorly thought out accounting standard that says crypto is not a real asset and we're gonna treat it as this other thing so it can't be in regulated finance. We had 21 Democrats vote with us to repeal this rule. Then we had 71 Democrats vote for a full market structure for crypto. So I would say those 50 Democrats who voted on the large regulation, the larger regulatory package on crypto, look at this anew. And if you want to send the message that you're pro-crypto, you want to send the message to your voters that you're pro-crypto and you want to protect their assets, those 50 that voted for the market structure but didn't vote for this should vote with us. We should have a two-thirds vote of this House to repeal this ill-designed accounting standard. This is not a marker of presidential leadership. What we've heard from this administration is all over the map on what they want to do with crypto. And now they're contorting themselves as the election gets closer. And so let's just do the right thing. Let's support sound policy. Let's override this veto. Send a message that America will remain the best place in the world to deploy capital and the best cutting edge technology with consumer protection and law abiding rights connected with those digital assets. And yet the market is still down. Bitcoin's price is still being suppressed. Why? To understand where Bitcoin's going, you need to understand why this happened. Pump USDC is money with all the benefits of the open internet, so it moves fast across borders.
Pompliano explains why the price is down here. Also, why are people calling Bitcoin illiquid? Prices go down because there's more sellers than buyers, obviously. Um, and so the question is, who's selling? And there's really two main culprits at the moment. Uh, the German government has about 50,000 Bitcoin that they seize from a pirating website, and they've been trying to offload it. What's interesting about it, if you look at the on-chain data, is they're basically going to as many exchanges as they can and trying to sell. Um, and so they're about halfway through that right now. It's about two and a half billion dollars. Uh, they've sold about a, a billion and a half or so. And then there's also the Mt. Gox Bitcoin that's been distributed. And so I think people more so are scared. Hey, if there's billions of dollars being distributed back, are these people who have been illiquid for years just going to sell it? What's really interesting about this is Bitcoin is still very illiquid. And so there's most of the Bitcoin that is out there being held by people that have a long-term view. And so when a seller shows up with just a couple billion of dollars, the price will go down. Now, if I told you someone was going to come sell billions of dollars and the price was only going to go down to $55,000 or so, that's actually pretty bullish, right? I, I think that people are looking at this and saying, hey, look, Bitcoin is still pretty healthy. How illiquid do you think the market is? I mean, we, we always talk about the, the whales who have the wallets yeah. that have been sitting there forever since the inception of Bitcoin, but how, do you, how big do you think it is at this point? At, at the start of this year, uh, the amount of Bitcoin that had not moved in over a year was over 70%. Um, 70%. And, so very high. Now, as the price has risen, some of that has started to get distributed, which is what you would expect in a bull market. And so really the question right now is basically, you know, how strong are those hands and will they outlast the German government? Will they outlast these, you know, Mt. Gox uh, distributions. And so my expectation is as we get further into the bull market, that number will come back down towards 50, 55 percent. But still, at least half of the Bitcoin probably is being held by people who have a 10 plus year time horizon. But the next catalyst on everybody's mind is the Spot Ethereum ETF. The launch of the Spot Ethereum ETF is anticipated for July 18th. It could be as early as July 15th. Bloomberg analyst Eric Balchunas says the most likely date is July 18th. This development is expected to bring significant changes to the cryptocurrency market with potential inflows estimated at $15 billion into the Ethereum ETF in 1.5 years. So this is actually the stellar inflows Bitcoin has had right now in five months. They're anticipating Ethereum ETF gets this in 1.5 years. The thing is, Ethereum is about one third the size of Bitcoin by market cap. So Ethereum really only needs to get one third the inflows, I think, to be considered a raging success like Bitcoin is. And then as time passes, I believe the Ethereum ETF could be possibly even more valued than the Bitcoin one. I'm bullish on Bitcoin as digital gold, but you know what gets invested? investors excited? Tokenization, stablecoin market, DeFi, L2s, NFTs, gaming, RWAs, DPIN. If you want all those things, Ethereum is like the pick and shovels play to do it. So over time, as more institutional investors get onboarded, I think the Ethereum ETF could be a raging success over time, right? It's hard not to be bullish, right? 40% of Ethereum supply is basically locked up, 28% staked, 12% in smart contracts and bridges. We showed you the other day that Ethereum supply on exchanges is rapidly shrinking. With the imminent trading start of the ETH ETF, institutional interest is set to rise and ETH's price is primed for a rally. Crypto is a political issue now, of course, with the 2024 Republican Party adding crypto rights to their official party platform. They're promising to defend your right to mine Bitcoin in the US, defend the right to self-custody, defend your right to transact freely without surveillance. So no CBDCs, an overall and unlawful and un-American crypto crackdown. It's your move, Biden, or should I say your move, Democrats. Either way, Joe Biden and the Democratic administration is attending a Bitcoin and crypto roundtable in D.C. this month. It could be happening this week. We don't know. Interesting take from crypto OG Travis Kling. The likelihood of a Trump presidency is the single most mispriced aspect of crypto right now. If we get a Trump win in November, Gensler is gone immediately and replaced with someone much more pro-crypto, and the entire regulatory landscape for alts will drastically improve. So we'll see if Trump wins or whoever the Democratic candidate is. One thing is for sure, big entities are moving in and they're moving in quickly. Goldman Sachs, a 1.64 trillion asset manager, plans to launch three tokenization projects by the end of 2024. Why are they planning to expand their crypto offerings? One reason, client interest has increased.
Guys, use code Altcoin Daily for 10% off the Bitcoin conference. Ticket prices are just about to increase. Use code Altcoin Daily to get your Bitcoin conference tickets for Nashville right now. We'll be on stage. We'll be speaking. Hopefully, we get a chance to hang out. Also, still interested in you engaging with us on Roundtable, a bot free way to engage. I'll leave a link to this post in the comment section below. You can see 22 comments already, nine likes. I want to know from you are we done or is the retrace going? to be deeper. I'll leave a link to this. Guys, subscribe to the channel. Join our team. My name is Aaron at Altcoin Daily. See you tomorrow. Nothing dims my light like a mic. All right, guys, that, that concludes the episode of the Altcoin Daily. And um, right now, it looks like Bitcoin is trading sideways at a little bit over 57000 and uh, Ethereum was at 3,100. But so we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see if Bitcoin is going to go back lower, if we're going to bounce back higher. Uh, but anyways, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button for post notifications. And if you can, support the channel if you can. PayPal Cash App is in the description or you know, get the channel membership, $3 a month. And I'm going to um, be uh, dropping some content, private content for the channel members here pretty soon. Hey, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.